Uh, I'm a native Houstonian. I grew up in Texas, and I'm so honored to be a part of this. How much has the rodeo changed in 57 when you went through it, and it, it changed your life so much? Oh, it has. Uh, mainly the people that were around me, the money helped a lot. But when I went to a &M, they would come up and visit with me frequently and encourage me. And so whenever I think of the rodeo, I think of a group of encouragers. And they really inspired me to make a difference with my life. And so that's what I'm all about. Ben, you look at this float here, you got six winners right here, all here, different generations. Just how, how cool of an experience is that? Well, I can't describe it. It's priceless, what it means. A lot of bonding going on here, right? Oh, yes. Uh, we're going to be very close. We're going to talk with one another. We're going to rejoice, uh, talk about all the great experiences we've had. And it's such a variety of people up here. You know, we, we have one that's a veterinarian, one that works at the Space Center, uh, a student right here that's just started. And uh, it's just an honor to be with these people. My good friend Bill here, you know, he's invited me to Washington. And so it just goes on and on, it multiplies. Uh, I guess it's more of a geometric experience that the more people you meet, the more you get to know. And so I really want to do everything I can to continue to work with the Livestock Show. Mr. Dickerson, we appreciate your time. Congratulations on being one of the Grand Marshals. Thank you. Tom and Gina, back to you. Wow, you know, scholarship recipient, Dr. Ben Dickerson. And you know, you can't talk about the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo and one of its most important legacies surrounds the fact that so much scholarship money has been given to Texas students, $500 million. It is one of the cornerstones, really, of this whole event. Um, we'll have a chance to have our president and CEO, Joel Cowley, uh, with us a little later and we can expand on that. The thing that I've found the greatest pride is, is that $500 million is a growing, a growing concern. Mm -hmm. And what they have done is they're already planning 10 years out of what we can do to be bigger and better. And you have to understand that our footprint hasn't grown much since we were $300 million, $400 million, and now at $500 million. And it's not just the rodeo at NRG Stadium. It's not just the cattle show. It's not just the parade today. This is an involvement with the trail rides. It's an involvement from the Conoco Run and the five million that they put into it. Every year, there's a new way of finding somebody that makes this work. Look at the carriages are here. Yep, members of the executive committee, we got the chairman, Jim Winnie here, he's the uh, chairman of this, and then a livestock show and rodeo president, Joe Colley, and then you got a number of family members and wives there on the wagons this morning. They've committed $27 million to scholarships yeah. this year yeah. alone. Yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna hear from Joel later on. He's gonna join us here on the set and, and, and talk to us more about that and who gets these scholarships, because there's some misconceptions about who gets oh, the yes. scholarships. Very but uh, these folks here that you're looking at on the carriages, and we saw the flag bearers go by, really invest so much of their lives into obviously this day, but the weeks ahead, March 3rd through the 22nd uh, during the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo activities. There's my good friend, Terrence Fontaine. He asked me to give him a shout out. Well, you so did. I'm doing so. What's up, Terrence? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we'd get such a great shot of him <laughs> there. Well, but, I'm uh, very sure proud to be on the Somebody will slide up there and get a chance to uh, visit with him. With our executive committee from Brady Carruth all the way to P. Michael Wells, Parker Johnson, Don Jordan, Jack Lyons, uh, Warner Irvin, Hap Honeycutt, all of these that you see riding. And now our third year vice president spouses. Look at those beautiful carriages from the first lady's carriage to our president's wife with Tammy Cowley and uh, our executive committee vice presidents on horseback. My Lord, they've been up early this morning. But look at the visa vis carriages. Look at those beautiful draft yes. horses that uh, are pulling them. And you know, you tell us too, Bob, about the authenticity of the wagons and stuff that we're going to see throughout the day today in this parade. Well, as you said hello uh, to Terrence a moment ago, Deidre Fontaine is, happens to be in this visa vis Yes, his wife. The authenticity goes back 100 years plus. And you have to think about the work and the care that it takes to keep them in running operative condition throughout the year. There are committees that just do that that we will never introduce or thank. And that's where the tens of thousands, over 35,000 volunteers make it work. Tom.
35,000. Yeah. So <laughs> this is Jim Winnie's last year as chairman of this rodeo. Brady Carruth comes in, he's the chairman-elect. What's he in for? Um, well, Brady's been a part of this since uh, the beginning of his volunteer years and driving. He's a second generation coming into this. He knows exactly where he where he's coming into it, and I'm sure that he's thinking about where he wants to go. Yeah. Just smidgens of improvement. That's all that they can do. Yeah, li little, little tweaks, and we're going to talk more throughout our coverage about some of the new things this year, because every year they add something new. I remember when they started with the app. You know? Right. <laughs> so oh, yeah. you could find parking and stuff oh, like that, yeah. and, and so there's always something uh, new that's added to just, like you said, tweak the experience. And part of this emphasis yeah. is on social media. This year they started the bottle cap wall at the barbecue, which is going on that's still big. tonight. Mm -hmm. Last night at the barbecue, and it's like this Instagrammable spot. Did at the you barbecue. go to the barbecue last I night? I did John? not. I had okay. another event there, okay. but okay. it is okay. just a great event. But Maybe you saved your bottle cap so that you can add it to it when you get there, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> just from a couple of beers, Bob. Just from <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd ask. He collects his neighbor's beers. Oh, well, here it comes is. Howdy. Oh, howdy, howdy. It would not be a parade without a howdy oh, and or a rodeo yeah. or a livestock show. Yeah, the Bowlegged H became the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo logo back in 1966, which I think was a fine, fine, fine year. Good things came out of that year. A show official knew how this logo could come alive, so over a casual lunch with friends from the rodeo, executive committee member Hap Honeycott came up with the idea for this bow-legged H as the rodeo mascot, drawn up on uh, nothing less than just a napkin. And not long after that, Howie was born. Some of the best deals I've ever made were made on, <laughs> on <a> napkin. napkin. <laughs> I'm not going to say where uh, they were coming from, but um, uh, Tom, you don't have to uh, reply on that. Gary Plotkin, you look good this morning. He does look good there on, on that uh, good looking float. And we've got some winners to announce to you too. They're out our coverage, uh, some of the float winners, because we have some good looking floats today. And look Thank at the you. sunshine. Oh my God. We started out this day a little cloudy, a little it chilly, but now so we've got awesome. the sun out there shining on downtown Houston. I like the juxtaposition, Bob. You just talked about this great city and all these skyscrapers downtown. And then we go back to our Texas roots. Mm -hmm. Well, when you take the roots, it takes a special horse to be in a parade. It takes a special team of horses. And it takes a special group of people that will manage those horses year round. I'm going to say real quick that that was Senator John Cornyn we saw on horseback. Go ahead. I was, uh, we ran by. <laughs> there he is quick. again. There, there he is. <laughs> the Honorable. Welcome. Good morning. Alita, I know you're out there with them. Hey, good morning. Hey, let me tell you, one of the best parts of being part of this team, you guys, is of course getting a chance to meet all of our rodeo fans, but also the little guys. This is my friend Asher. Asher, say hi, hi. to Gina and Bob and Tom. So Asher, who are you here with today? My dad and all my brothers. I love it. And you said the best part of the parade is what? What do you love most? The horses. What about the horses, Asher? That they're really pretty. They are so pretty, and we have been loving, loving this weather. The weather's been great, right? Yeah. She loves it. Again, we've got old and young enjoying the beautiful sights and sounds of the parade, guys. And yes, there are a lot of horses here to enjoy today. Alita, thank you. That's Congresswoman Sheila Jackson leaning behind her is Congressman Al Green in the carriages this morning. As you look at the crowds, every year these crowds seem to get bigger and bigger, and certainly with the weather, there's Congressman Al Green. This year brings out a lot of people. Look like people five deep there. It's nice to come out when the weather's this perfect, right? I guess they've probably followed along that we're going to have wonderful weather, no, no concerns about rain or anything like that to mess up your cowboy or cowgirl hat today. I'm seeing that uh, a lot of our great political leaders are not riding a horseback today. You're they've, right. Sometimes they've gone to they the do. carriages. Yeah. And um, I don't have a problem with that. I'm big on carriages. We use them in the grand entry every night at Rodeo Houston. And it, it's a classy way to present people. I do believe, yes, that's Dan Crenshaw, our honorable U.S. congressman. Uh, newly elected, recently joining Congress. I was going to say, too, the nice thing about the uh, carriages as well is they can bring <coughs> along their families, which is, I think is always fun, too. To to get their families out and involved in the rodeo traditions and, and nice to see the young ones there yes. like we see in that shot 
uh, get a chance to grow up being a part of this parade and, and attending it. Dan Patrick's family with him here this morning. You know what? Those kids have been in a couple of parades, but in some cases, the kid will be get, get to ride in a carriage, in a wagon, in a horseback, and these things change their ways. The mayor is upon us. Let's go to Alita Laresca. Hey, this is a familiar face right here. He never needs an introduction. Mayor Sylvester Turner, can I just tell you, you and Little Papas are looking something else today. You guys look fantastic. It's a fantastic horse, and it's a great day, and all the water samples came back clean, so you know I'm feeling real good this morning. Wait, what does that mean, Mayor? What does that mean? We're going to hear some good news in about an hour. All right, we're going to hear some good news. You heard it, friends, about the water situation. Well, let me just say, Mayor, every year, looking better and better. I know you've been practicing with little Papas the last couple days. Little Papas and I have become a good couple. <laughs> well, we like you. You got a few more years of this, don't you? Thank you. About, uh, what, this is my fifth? Uh, three more times. All right. Hey, what are you saying to all the rodeo fans out here? Go Texans! <laughs> you know, and, and, and enjoy the parade. That's right. I don't think I can keep up with Ooh, little Papas! <laughs> You look so cute, Alita, and I appreciate you bringing us breaking news. Where else but in right. Houston, right Texas, does the mayor break news on horseback? Exactly. Right? All right. That, that's Enjoy a big, day, okay? big deal. The water is okay. In about an hour, you'll get the official. I love the saddle that he rides. Uh, Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. It's just you awesome. He does a good job. <laughs> and you know, you had just said how there were f there were fewer dignitaries on horseback, and then there you go. There you go. You got a lot of the city council <laughs> members not only on horseback but in the carriages as well. Of course, the mayor referring to that boil water order boil water order that's been in effect for a couple of days because of that big water main leak. That's been fixed mainly. But we do have a number of restaurants that still it have problems up. with we it. We have some first world problems. We with do. The Starbucks <laughs> around town. Gina Gaston <laughs> couldn't get her Starbucks, so I had to deliver this morning. All right, let's ch go to Chaz Miller, one of our journalists out there on the court. Chas? Hey guys, I wanted to give you an idea just how far this parade goes. So you guys are in downtown, way back over that way. We're currently on Sabine Street and you've got all these trail riders lined up, ready to make their way inside of downtown. So how long have you been up there? Um, like 30 minutes. All right, well cool, have fun. Have a good ride. They're going into downtown. I'm going to look over here, you got the rodeo run parade going on down uh, at the bayou. And I mean, this thing goes on, man. And I'm trying to tell you guys that later today, we're trying to get with the last trail ride and the entire thing. Now, there are 99 uh, participants in this parade, and we're trying to get on chuck wagon number 99. We'll see if we can do that. We'll talk, toss it back to you guys. Thank you, Chaz. There you go. You got some members of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Executive Committee. We got uh, them in horseback or on horseback, and some in the carriages as well. A lot of uh, executive vice presidents and executive committee members, council members of the city of Houston, as we said, both on horseback and in the carriages this morning, Bob. Well, we will also have uh, those executive committee members, lifetime vice presidents, will be in every grand entry in every performance uh, in the NRG Stadium for Rodeo Houston. And when you think about you get city council members on horseback, they're going to get a good look at the streets. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, is there a pothole someplace we need to fix? Yeah, yeah, things you don't see when you're zipping by in a car, huh? You can, you can see out here in the parade. And I'd like to get some of our state stuff. officials out on the highways and byways in Texas. Oh, we're taking a look now at the... Um, Western Heritage Float, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Parade Committee float, and that's a good looking float. And I think we have a, a winner on that float. Dakota Mata, I believe, is on this float for us, the 2019 Rodeo Rockstar Junior Division winner. Yeah, each year's annual auction, the parade committee auctions off spots on that parade committee float, so you, you have to kind of pony up if you want to get on that float, <laughs> to use the Western term there. That's a great looking float well though, done, this Tom. year. And we got the winners that we'll have coming up throughout this parade. They've chosen the chairman's float and uh, most uh, decorative and theme what float, they, theme originality. Float? Yep. Yeah, so the winners are going to start coming through pretty soon. Well, the floats are awesome, but I hear the drum corps oh, and the spirit of Houston yes, coming. You do. This is the Cougar Marching Band. Once again, our drum majors, Madeline Gregory, Peter Rosinski. Matthew Hogan, Hannah Scott, 
Look at this. It is an exciting time to be a Cougar. It really is. That university is just elevating itself in every category. I'm really excited. It's my chance to boast. I get to go see U of H play Cincinnati tomorrow. Oh, you do? I'm looking great. forward to that. The basketball team looking really great right now as are some of the other organizations there at U of H. These are drum majors, Madeline Gregory, Peter Winkski, Matthew Hogan, and Hannah Scott performing today. Do you think that they got it figured out when they get, they get to us in live mics? They know when to start this. <laughs> Let's listen. All right. Wow. Marching band, and we've got David Nuno as well on the U of H alumni float right behind the marching band. Can you hear us, David? Yes, I can, Tom. I'm here with Rena Couture, the president of the University of Houston on the alumni float. And Dr. Couture, I tell you what, this is uh, quite a spectacle, isn't it? Yes, it's surely, absolutely phenomenal. Can you just kind of give us the feeling, the, the vibe at the University of Houston right now? Because it feels like it's trending so, so up. Well, it should trend up. It is in Houston, after all. And Houston is a city of entrepreneurs, a city of anything can be done here. The University of Houston should represent the same spirit. And from an athletic standpoint, I am a sports reporter, so i got to talk. Tomorrow is a very big game for the University of Houston. Yes, tomorrow is a very big game. But we're going to win it tomorrow. It's just very important. I know that. Yeah. And what is this I'm looking at right here? What is this? We won the sweepstakes trophy for our float. We've redesigned our float with a replica of the Houston Cougar on our campus at TDECU Stadium. And we won the sweepstakes trophy today. Well, congratulations. What Thank a great you. time. It's a great time for our Houston University of Houston alumni. I'm greatly uh, proud to represent our Houston alumni, a 280,000 strong plus. And we have so many great things going on with the university that university that uh, Dr. Couture has helped us come to fruition. And we're feeling, we're seeing it. Uh, absolutely. So Houston, we're proud, and we are Cougar proud as well. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. I appreciate it. Tom and Gina. And you're right. Dr. <laughs> Couture has led that university to tier one status. She is a dynamic individual. She is. I, I got a chance to go to the graduation for University of Houston, and she shared her story, and it is a compelling one. There's the police chief, Art Acevedo, on horseback this morning, leading the HPD mounted patrol. Now, when you think about the other mounted patrols that will come by, this had kind of gone away over the years. And back in 84, then uh, Chief Brown reestablished this. And I'm watching here and looking at the authenticity again. Men and women within the HPD patrol. There'll be a lot more members than just what you're looking at right here. Yeah, this is the largest mounted unit west of the Mississippi. 36 horses, 26 officers. We have Alita Loresca, I believe, here on a special float, at least it's special to us. It's very special. <laughs> you know, my family couldn't be here today, but am I so happy that my ABC 13 family is here with me. I've got Eric Barajas and his Good. wonderful son, Gavin. Then you've got Samika Knight. You got Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Eric, yes. this is amazing. Oh, it is. Weather's great. It's always great to be in the rodeo parade. You see everybody come out here and just you kind of get that rodeo spirit flowing through you. It feels great. You know, it's one of those things like I feel like the parade really just kicks everything off. Right, Travis? Travis is multitasking. Yeah, sorry. I'm doing the Facebook Live, too, as we're doing this. Uh, this is great. This is like the official kickoff to the rodeo. It's what kind of like marks that it's rodeo season, and we know that means a lot of fun is right around the corner. Samika Knight, Samika Knight, Tom Cook has a special message for you. Hi, Tom. How are you? <laughs> Great, Samika. <laughs> Hi, guys. It was so, I am so excited to be here. This is my first time on the rodeo parade, and I am just ecstatic, seriously. Probably like a two-year-old child. All right, guys, we'll toss it back to you. <laughs> my partner, uh, Samika Knight, love her. She is having she fun is out adorable. there this morning. I, I don't get to see Samika enough. Well, we don't we see you afternoon shifts. people very I know, much. I know, but I bad. always enjoy seeing her when I when I get the chance to. So special. All right, we've got the sheriff Ed Gonzalez coming up. He's on horseback this morning as well, and he is a former Houston police officer, former city council member, leading the uh, sheriff's department on horseback this morning. Well, the whole department, as you see that posse showing up behind them, and uh, we have some very high-powered officials. 
if I may say it that way, with the Harris County District Clerk, Marilyn Burgess, Commissioner Rodney Ellis, Commissioner Adrian Garcia, and our District Attorney, Kim Ogg, and of course, the Constable, Alan Rosen, a horseback in that group this morning, Sheriff's Mounted Patrol. My Lord, we've got the entire police force of Harris County in all divisions. <laughs> Who's police in the city? Uh, I think it's well taken care of. I'm sure that it is. I'm sure that it is, yes. Now, I know what, uh, there's one thing about this mounted, junior mounted posse thing. Uh-huh. When I saw this in print and it said it goes back, that it's uh, for the 88 years, this is the 69th year for this junior posse. This is a big deal, and we just kind of slide by it all the time and go, yeah, the kids are a horseback, too. Yeah. This is a big thing. Yeah. But they practice this all year long, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want to keep the tradition alive, so it's important to keep them involved. You know, right beyond uh, where we're sitting, we hear the street sweepers going by, and they just went by. That's an important part of the process, too. (laughs) Absolutely. There they are. There they are. There's the street sweepers. This will be the only time of the year that I think that the end of dump of what the sweet sweepers will have is actually a return of fertilizer. You know, Bob, that sounds like a lot of horse apples. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to put it politically correct in any other way, Tom. Uh, and and uh, all parts of Gina the process said that I had sexy. to be that way today. Here's this the Fiesta the, Marks yes, float. Yes. This is one of our great floats here. Fiesta, Texas born and long serving the Houston community since 1972. Yeah, they're presenting Go, Go Tejano Day this year. And they're, of course, known for their emphasis, specialty food and for offering products from all over the globe. Fiesta offering a vast variety of dry grocery and perishable items. And we're always happy to see them here in this parade as they are every year. It's a Fiesta when you shop at Fiesta. And the United States Marine Reserve Band, New Orleans for the United States Marine Corps. This, this music makes you want to move. Yeah, I don't. I saw you start to do yeah. that. I did too. Well, these guys are probably coming fresh off the Mardi Gras parades in New Orleans. I suspect they were in a number of those. And look at that beautiful gate. Isn't that awesome? It is. Boy, when they make a move, it's a move. So it's not just the trail, trail riders that come oh, from no. far and wide to be here. It's also bands like this one. And you'll notice that the street sweepers were just ahead of the United States Marine Corps band. Which I is, would which say is, that's <laughs> great planning. That is. <laughs> Absolutely. Make way for the Marines. I'm sure they appreciate it. The Marine Force Reserve Band under the direction of Warrant Officer Eric Kine. The senior enlisted uh, master is Sergeant Brad Rarig. And also being led on this march by Drum Major Staff Sergeant Keith. Right, and behind them, the Armed Forces Appreciation Committee flag bearers bearing a giant U.S. flag this morning. There's the Marine Corps band marching just ahead of them. Of course, Armed Forces Appreciation Day at this year's show is Wednesday, March 4th, with the First Responders Day on March 5th. We uh, March always 9th, like to excuse see, me. We always like to see the young kids getting their flags, or they pass them out there Isn't that awesome? along the side, and the young people I love. tried to find out, two of the people I asked you said, tell them thousands. There thousands are, of flags are passed out. Flags oh, yeah, are being yeah, passed out. they are passing them out. And those will be taken home. Everybody's wearing a smile. Did the cavalry are oh goody here they are? I thought they got <laughs> by us. I'm big on this group right here um, for the are? fact that we will have them in a grand entry. A certain group of the United States Army Corps, Army Horse Cavalry, and. Um, we want to say thank you to First Lieutenant Mark Butler and Staff Sergeant Kyle Miner that make this happen. This goes back to the 1800s, 1870. They're from Eight. Fort Hood, right? Yes. And important to say, these are active duty soldiers that are volunteering to support the United States Army. Um, we have David Nuno now standing by, I think, with, on one of our award-winning floats, huh, David? That, that's right. I'm on the Goya float. My good friends of Goya hanging out with Chef Hunter. I had the privilege of watching his story on Localist. You guys got to check it out. Chef Hunter, what do, what do we got cooking here? Because this smells fantastic. We got some uh, garlic, some olive oil, some beans, some of the Goya seasoning, and all, all this stuff with Goya products. And we even got coconut water. I love the coconut water here. How did you get into cooking? Huh? How did you get into cooking? Uh, well, I was put on a low 
showdown restriction when I uh, was in the hospital at Baton Rouge and the food was not good and I had, okay, I need to cook it where it tastes good because my dad said, well, how about you cook it? And I had, okay. And here we are, right? Oh, yeah. So give us a little dance. I want to make sure everybody knows that you can check out his story on abc13.com slash localish. An amazing story. Chef Hunter can cook. Chef Hunter can dance. What else can you do? Uh, you name it. Um, yeah, act. I can uh, act for all kinds of stuff and uh, run around sometimes. Or I try, but after transplant, I'll be able to do it even more, hopefully, and be able to feel better because I have half a heart right now. Well, Chef Hunter, you are an inspiration. Give me some right there. And I'm going to have some of those beans, OK? I'm going to have some, OK? okay. Tommy Jean, I'm going to eat. You guys have fun on the, on the Let's, set, OK? Chef Hunter cooking while he's rolling. Uh, and that kid is waiting awesome. for a heart transplant at Texas Children's yeah. Hospital. But he is an upbeat guy, that's Incredible for sure. Story. Well, we're looking at the Waltrip High School Band, 180 strong. We're going to take a short break and be back with more coverage live from downtown Houston. Welcome back, everyone, to the 82nd Downtown Houston Rodeo Parade as you look at the Girl Scouts of San Jacinto. These are the Green Starlets Drill Team. we got the wagons there, and we also have the Spurs and Stars Float. Tom Cook, team guest, and Bob Tolman with you this morning. Yes, it's great to have them back here, and there's their good-looking float as well. It's so nice to see the young ladies out. Uh, and what time is it, Gina? It's Girl Scout cookie time. It, oh, it is that time of year. I time never time. thought you'd bring that up. <laughs> you know, these young girls get a chance to learn how to be executive business women by virtue of their membership in the Girl Scout. So it's a lot of fun, but it's also some very practical, real-world experiences that they get. I don't think I've been to a grocery store or anything else lately that there haven't been Girl Scout cookies. Alita, do you have Girl Scout cookies? Girl Scout cookies. You know this cowgirl is all about those Girl Scout cookies. But you know what? I've got a cowgirl here who probably likes Girl Scout cookies. This is Lauren with the Lone Star Cowgirls. This is her eighth year participating in the rodeo. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing? We're doing great. Talk, talk to us about this wonderful group of ladies that you've got with you. Yeah, this is um, our eighth year riding in the parade. We're absolutely thrilled to be here. Um, we travel throughout Texas performing um, at local rodeos and just showing our Texas pride. Well, and I love it. I mean, you can see the ladies behind them. I mean, they're so poised and so classic. How are you guys doing up there? All right, guys, you guys got to go to the rodeo and watch Lauren and the Lone Star Cowgirls. What a great group. All right. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Those horses are beautiful, too, Bob. Well, you have to think about the hours it takes. They washed them, I'm sure, two or three times already this week. But think about, they were all here in place at 5, 6, and 7 o'clock this morning, standing in their stirrups in the hippodrome Standing stand in position. their stirrups. This is That's uh, some good ab control right well, there. Th this group, a particular <laughs> group of ladies, are all trained professionals, and they do a multitude of different kinds of drills, as well as grand entries. 
They represent the great state of Texas awesomely. You may have seen them in January of 29, or yeah, a year ago, they were in Texas Monthly. They yes. did a great piece on those. All right, let's go to David Nunu. David. Guys, I got seats right here, right for the parade. I'm with three of the rodeo. Can I get everybody's name? Chandler. Campbell. All right, so what is your favorite part of the rodeo? The bands playing. The bands? The music. All right, so are you guys going to participate in the rodeo parade one day when you get a little older? Maybe? Yeah? You guys have any special dances you can show us? Anything cool? Because I saw you guys celebrating before the camera was here. I'm not going to embarrass you. OK. I'll do the dance later when the camera's not watching. Back to you guys. That, that's how kids are. <laughs> they're very cute. The most beautiful award earlier today. I thought they were talking about Gina Gaston, but they I were actually- I they were talking about those girls. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been too. They're actually talking about the Houston Community College float bomb. Yeah, it's a good looking float they have here. Well, our uh, Houston Community College trustees, Dr. John Hansen, very proud to see this community college float come by this morning. Look at the, they, they've, they've done some work on this. Yes, they have. They they're did they're just holding put up this, that trophy proudly yes. too, I see. Well, they have good reason to do that. As you think, they are the number one developer in Houston of workforce and ready candidates. Number two among all two-year institutions granting associates and degrees in liberal arts. 50 years now, Houston yeah. Community College. Here we go with the Marching Gators. This is the Dickinson High School Marching Band right behind us. Yeah, the Gator Band is a five-time state marching champion. Jessica Ellicott, two-time all-state -st trumpet recipient. Good-looking flag core as well there coming to us from Dickinson. And their basketball team had a big game last night. I think they won, as a matter of fact. I think they're still in the playoffs. You know, normally when they come by, I can look out here and kind of see them. Uh-huh. And they've got them narrowed up this morning. Have you noticed that the crowd is 8, 10, 12 people deep? It is a deep, it is a deep uh, audience. Yeah, as far as I can see to the east through downtown Houston, we might set a record today of on-site people in downtown yeah. Houston. Yeah. Okay. Well, we may set a record data. overall yeah. for the rodeo and livestock show this year. We had big purses. We got a lot of great competition this year throughout the livestock show and rodeo, Bob. Well, you, you were bragging a minute ago, and I'll reiterate the fact about $27 million in the educational commitment. But when you think we've got 2.1 million total hours, and I think that that might be a little light. That's 2.1 million hours of volunteer time. If you had to pay, we would be the biggest business in America. Yeah. If you had yeah. to pay just average wage, minimum wage, to all the volunteers to make it happen, but to raise $500 million over the years, remember this number, if you will, 19,000. And we'll get back with this with Joel Cowley a little bit later in our show. 19,000 scholarships since 1957. And uh, Leroy Schaefer instilled this in me, you know, 30 plus years ago of how important it is of how many young people. And then in those early days when I was here, it was 4-H and FFA. Yeah, a lot but, of people still think that the oh, only no, no. kids that get these scholarships are agriculture-based Art, kids. science, inner city kids, everything that you can imagine. You do not have to be raised on a farm, live on a farm or a ranch. And uh, we now canvas all of the, you know, go Texan counties, and any kids in 4-H and FFA have a chance. Look at there. We get to talk about our first group of trail riders. Speaking of a lot of that, horse that apples, have... Bob, the great salt grass <laughs> trail ride. A thousand riders in all and 24 wagons. This is one of the biggest as they made their way in from Cat Spring, Texas, and everybody converging on Memorial Park Yeah, last they're night. the granddaddy of them all. The original ride from which all others were inspired. Many are spinoffs, brought mules and horsebacks into popularity and created a whole new generation of organized trail riding. It's still, um, I'm still in awe of the fact that people give up their year's worth of vacation time to, to journey to downtown I Houston I am too. on horseback. And in these carriages, they are sleeping um, on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they and are eating parts. on the side of the road and in carts. I mean, they really commit to this tradition, to our Western heritage. 
to be a part of this. And for, for folks who are new to our community, we can't really overstate the commitment. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say it in that way. I think Alita might be a part of their world right now. Alita? Yeah, hey guys. Hey guys. Are you, do you, do you, do you, yep, are, hey, here. yeah, you guys hear me? <laughs> okay. Here. Hey, I was just making friends. You know, one of the neat things about being part of the parade here is there's so many loyal ABC 13 viewers, but also fans. This is Juan and his beautiful wife. Renee. Renee. Okay, Juan, so you usually run the, the rodeo. Run. This is my first year actually sitting back and watching it. So. And it, it's a different feeling. It, uh, it, what, what, it is. Talk about I, it. I'm just amazed at watching all the people and the, the excitement and waving at all the folks and everything. It's a great time. So I'm and it, and it's so different than watching it on TV, right? Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. you got to be here. If you have a chance to come, come next year. Renee, I mean, just to see your husband, you know, enjoying this stuff. Isn't it so cool? It's great because it's the first time we've experienced a parade together. So it's great. It's great. And we have a wonderful time. You know, and it's never too late, right? From young to old. I mean, this is such a great, great event to be part of, really. Back to you guys. All right, Alita, thank you very much. And we also have Chaz Miller, who's a little bit farther down the parade route. Chaz, good morning to you. Tom, how's it going, man? We're having a great time out here today. Earlier, we were on Memorial. We we're trying to get down to the trail riders. We met quite a few of them. I saw one little girl. She was maybe three or four on top of a horse eating a sausage wrap. Life is good. Speaking as life is good, I'm going to get out of the way and show you this awesome section of rodeo parade goers over here. You guys want to say hi? Hey, how are you guys? So this is the special friend section set up. Like I said, we are at Milam and Bell having a good time. I want to come over here. I met these friends just a second ago. Let's talk about this section, what it is that you guys are doing over here, and you can introduce us to some of your people. Hello, everyone. We are from DNS Residential Community Services in Brenham, Texas, and we came to enjoy the parade. You came all the way for Brenham. So how cool is it that you guys have these areas where you can relax, spread out, and everybody can enjoy this stuff in comfort? Um, it's pretty amazing. It's a blessing. Do you want to introduce us to your friends over here? You say hello. Say hello. This is Mikey. OK. Say hi, Mikey. That's Terry. All right. I don't know her name. And so you guys came all the way from Brenham. That's one thing. You come out here, you meet so many different people from all over Texas, all different kinds of people. It's really a great day, and it just really represents what Houston's all about. So I'm going to go back over to Tom and Gina, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks, Chaz. Thank you, Chaz. As we continue to watch the Saltgrass Trail Ride, and this is a long one, Bob. Well, you're talking about all of the different wagons. And one thing that I wanted to add, what Gina was talking about, uh, take their two or three week or a month vacation and dedicated to all of the trail ride and today's parade. There are people who literally work every weekend and every day that they have off, and a lot of retired people work year round to keep all of these horses taken care of, keep all of the wagons fit and shape so that they pull and they're safe. And then the scouting, to work with all of the different police departments and sheriff departments to make sure that those routes coming 100 miles, 40 miles, or 150 miles into Memorial Park, that that is constant meetings of now, okay, we're gonna have construction. Now we're gonna have a detour. Now, what are we gonna do with that trail ride in order to make it safe, number one, exciting, number two, and then get here on time to Memorial Park to be in this parade today. Yeah, yeah, and an exciting day, go text and day on Friday when all the kids at their schools, try and peek out the window oh, yeah. and see if they can see the, right. the <laughs> trail riders coming into town. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more.
And welcome back to the 82nd Annual Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Parade. We are Coming to you from downtown Houston. Oh, a beautiful day in downtown Houston. We're joined by the Livestock Show and Rodeo President Joe Colley. Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful morning. Yes, We've got another perfect. good parade going on here. Fantastic parade. Great crowds. A lot of young people watching. This is a great way to kick off the 2020 show. And it looked like out on the streets that it's as deep as it is. What we're here at the beginning. What we can see yeah. at the beginning. Absolutely, they're lined up deep, and uh, what's cool is to see all those young people sitting there uh, on the sidelines and thinking that uh, their parents were probably sitting in their place, yeah. and their children might be sitting in their place someday as well. I know it never gets old for you, and I know every year you guys work to try and find a, a little thing to make the experience even better for families. So let's talk about some of what you have going on this year uh, during the Houston Livestock Show and, and Rodeo. Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, new attractions going on this year. We have uh, extreme dogs, uh, which will be fun. These are rescue dogs that will be doing uh, tricks and agility trials and dock diving into water, uh, born to buck display. So as Bob knows, a few years ago, we started this Mare and Foal presentation to celebrate generations of great bucking stock. They'll actually be on display for the public to see uh, on the east side of the Astrodome throughout the show, which is really neat. You know, we were talking before about adapting to the social media and things like that. We'll talk about that in a minute. First, we want to go to Alita as we watch the uh, U.S. Uh, Texas A&M Mounted Cavalry. Alita, where are you? Hey, guys, I'm with Kimberly A&M. You guys just saw their beautiful horses. Junior at A&M, and you're part of this wonderful Cavalier. Yes, ma'am. Part of the Parsons Mounted Cavalry. So talk about the experience on the rodeo today. It's definitely a super cool experience that we're able to represent a and at Houston Rodeo uh, Parade, and it's really cool. I'm excited to be here. And every position is so important. You're part of the grounds crew, right? Yes, ma'am. We're part of the ground crew right now, so we're just kind of facilitating um, if anything goes wrong with the horses or if any of the riders need anything. And then we'll also do some cleanup afterwards. I'll tell you what, we appreciate you from behind <laughs> all of the parade routes and all behind the, the horses. Thank you so much, Kimberly, and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. You hear the whoops as the Aggies yeah. go by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe Colley, I was talking about how the rodeo adapts every year. And this year, or the years past, social media, you had the bottle cap wall now at the barbecue <laughs> because it's an Instagrammable shot, right? Absolutely. And, and other things during the show, uh, huge seven-foot tall letters that spell out rodeo as a, a social media photo opportunity. And we actually have a, 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 a social media spur on the north end of the stadium this year. It's kind of a check-in point. All things social media, people can sit, rest, relax, refill their water bottles, watch video, listen to music. Um, and our, our, our app, the Rodeo Houston app, is gamified now. So there's a game within the app where you can explore different areas of the ground and different activities, check in, earn buckles that you can redeem for points and prizes. Yeah. But we're going to have you stand by for a moment. I do want to point out right now that we're enjoying the talents of some young people from right here in Houston, Texans. This is the Heights high school band, a special award winning band. In fact, they uh, won the Ronald Thornton Rodeo Parade High School Spirit Award in 2018. Well, it wouldn't be a parade and or a grand entry rodeo to Houston without the fire trucks. You got noise from both directions. <laughs> and every year they repair all these fire trucks, get them ready to bring them inside NRG Stadium for Rodeo Houston. They are as much of the opening ceremony as any horseback rider will have, Tom. I don't know if you've ever rode on a fire truck, I have. but this is a big deal. Kids that come to the parade, this might start their life with Rodeo Houston. Then if they have a chance to ride on a fire truck in the rodeo, this starts their life. Then they get to meet Howdy. Then they get to meet Joe. <laughs> 2,000 special needs friends and senior citizens uh, get a chance to be a, a part of this event. A tin along the parade set up for special need friends. They can enjoy the parade, breakfast and lunch, and uh, it's served to them while they watch. So it's really an exciting uh, day and opportunity for all of them. And, and there's several trucks deep. And then you've got the carnival ticket sales characters are out here, Joel. And 
this is an opportunity actually for people, the last chance to get carnival tickets at half price today along the parade route. So today is the last opportunity to get those half price carnival packs. And for those who are value minded, it is fantastic. $50 gets you $138 in total value in, in carnival rides and coupons. And then uh, people might also want to think about coming on a Wednesday because we have our family Wednesdays where uh, seniors over 60 Children 12 and under get in free until noon. $2 carnival rides until 4 o'clock, and $2 food items as well are being offered until 4 o'clock on Wednesdays. Those are days when we, Tom, when we have a chance to set all kinds of new records we do each and every year. Back on the street with Alita. Hey, I'll tell you, Bob, one of the neat parts of the rodeo is you see all these really cool, classic cars, and here is just one of them. I am with uh, Neil here with the Houston uh, Fire Museum, correct? Yeah. And this is his first year driving in the parade. What do you think? Oh, I love it. It's wonderful. I'm here for the kids. It's all about the kids. And you brought your nephew today, yeah. right? What do you think so far? It's fun. It's fun? It's different from this perspective. Are you waving to everybody? No. No, he, he's not waving. So, Neil, one of the things about the parade, though, is all these fans. What do you think? Oh, it's awesome. I love all the turnout we got. I love it, too. All right, guys, what do you guys think? Isn't this great? Uh, several of these fire trucks, so wonderful. Yes. Bob just said they are as much a part of this parade as the horses are. Well, you have to take into account this. Most of these come from the Houston Museum or the Houston Area Museums that'll keep them up and running throughout the year. This is not the only parade that you will see that fire truck in. And when you take something that's 40, 50, 60, 80 years old and refurbish it to keep it going, they've become a part of the volunteer fire department somewhere. That's a 1937 Chevrolet. Okay. Looking good. Yeah, I know how old that is. <laughs> and it's no worse for the wear. <laughs> no, no, no. And right behind the fire trucks is the float that won the Chairman's Award this year. This is the Houston Airport System and the Rangers Riding Group float, as you will see right there. That's a good looking float. It is a good looking float. Uh, our airport system is a big one. In 2019, almost 60 million passengers flew through flew from, arrived, or connected at either, don't say that six times fast, George Bush Intercontinental uh, or Hobby Airport. I believe David Nuno is standing by. Hey guys, I am with Como Baila Los Caballos here, and I almost had a hip replacement surgery because this horse almost took me out, and I'm very scared, but Alejandro, tell me about these horses. Well, this is a group of enthusiasts of the Spanish and the Lucian horse. We are just friends and like to show off that the Andalusian horse can be used for any endeavor. We uh, use them for charrerias, we use them for alta escuela, for dressage, and obviously for parade riding. Uh, I'm getting a little claustrophobia because of the horses surrounding me. They're so sweet. Talk to me about alta escuela, what that means. Alta escuela is the French, they call it clásica, where they are taught how to dance, how to do piaf, passage. Right behind you, you have a horse that is doing a slow trot. Um, then they can do uh, cabriolas. And we simply come here to enjoy, have fun, and show off the horses. It's not about us and how we get dressed. It's about the horses. Absolutely, Alejandro. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the parade. I'm going to run out of here as quickly as possible, guys. All right. You know, Bob, that equestrian ballet is one of the most amazing things in this parade to me. What does it take to train a horse to do that? Oh, uh, that's just amazing. Uh, those are the Andalusians. I live about three miles from a Peruvian horse uh, palace and breeding stations. When you see these colts, they've got to be very careful with them uh, and take care of them because it's bred into them. It's genetically sound that they will perform as you're watching the older horses perform. And to see those babies at eight, nine months old weaning, and then a year old, and then they start into training, they have already picked up the caricature of what their parents and grandparents wow. have done. It's amazing. They're beautiful to watch. They really are. As well as looking at the, the Look wind. at that. Yeah. 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 Look at that. They know they're special. <laughs> Well, right behind them, you've seen some pictures as well of the Stephen F. Austin High School Band, and we're always happy to salute our young, talented musicians in our community. Well, the kids have a great time marching to parade. It's an honor to be invited to a big parade like this. 
Well, a lot of them have earned their way and they've come back year after year. And when you think we went clear to New Orleans and brought somebody here, um, these, as we're watching these horses again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want you to look at the tack. Look at the saddles. These are handmade saddles. saddles. Some of them are eight, 10, and 12 generations deep. And one of the things about becoming a charro is for the fact that you will build your tack, you will learn from your father, your grandfather, and you will build the costume that you wear. Whether it be the leggings, it could be the riata, which is a leather rope. Look at the tapestry on that yeah, silver mounted beautiful. saddle. Look at this. Beautiful. All right, let's go to Alita Reska. Alita. Hey, Tom. I, you know what? I always am so amazed by all the different trail riders here, trail bosses. I've got Malcolm with the Black History Trail Riders of America. And I have to tell you, Malcolm, some of the most beautiful horses, right? Thank you, ma'am. We take care of our horses just like we take care of our kids. We love them to death. And we enjoy riding in this honor of Black History Month. All right? You're looking great. Thank you so much for talking with me. Back to you guys. All right, there we go. That is, uh, as Alita said, Black History Riders of America. And that's a good looking group out here. It's also a big group. Yeah, and the purpose of their organization is exactly what he articulated, uh, to make people aware, Americans aware of the existence of black history and black culture and stories of black cowboys. Well, the black cowboys, when you talk about the great trail drives that came out of Mexico and all through Texas, going to the railheads in the Midwest. And everybody thinks it was all these cowboys, cowboys. It was black cowboys and, and some Mexican charros that actually did all the hard work. And uh, I've always promoted that with a lot of dear friends within those museums to the fact that uh, cowboys came from their heritage through the world and the cattle drives and uh, now rodeo is what it is because of that. Yeah, a lot of that story's been lost. Yes, so That's something my, my father used to enjoy sharing. All right, here's the uh, Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo uh, International Committee float. And Joel, we talk about this every year. This truly is an international it, event. It is an international event, no, no question. The International Committee hosts over 2,700 international visitors during the first week of the show. Most of those are from Central and South America because they're interested in the Brahmin and Brahmin type cattle that were developed right here in the Gulf Coast region because they work in their environments as well. But uh, it's not all Central and South America. Over 80 countries represented every year. So this is an international event, no question. When we think of today in the rodeo industry alone of where we represent in the circuit system, in the Mexico now, the Brazilians that are here with the bull riding, and now Brazilian all-around champion, Brazilian world champion, Cap Roper. Rodeo has become international, and our television shows, which is growing this year in a whole new aspect, will take us countrywide with where we're going, if I'm correct, Joel. That is correct. So uh, 15 of our rodeo performances will be broadcast live on the Cowboy Channel. Uh -huh. And uh, so we're very excited about that. The remaining five will be on Fox Sports Southwest. So our okay. our uh, super shootout, our uh, semifinals, both semifinals, our wild card, and our championship Sunday will all be on Fox Sports Southwest. Okay. So all 20 performances on live TV this year. Very exciting. Well, As we, we said, go. always something new. Speaking of black cowboys, is the Prairie View Trail Ride. Murtis Rittman Jr. is the trail boss here. They got seven wagons and more than 200 riders, and this is one of the old trail rides as well, Bob. Well, when you say uh, the cliche or the word Prairie View with old, you have to think about that seven wagons, and I've got to give Ronald Turner and Crystal Stewart their uh, trail boss and their secretary a little shout out with this that there's 63 years consecutively they have never missed one of our parades they were awarded the top trail ride award in 2019 and so prairie view texas be proud of this yeah isn't that something also in 2019, their co-founder, Mr. Deitman, was inducted into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. And uh, and only Murtis Deitman. They are, looking, they are looking good out there today on their horses. We have Chaz Miller standing by for us. Chaz? Gina, how's it going? Right now, we're at Walker and Bagby. We're seeing all the trail riders come in. I got some friends over here. They said they wanted to say hi on TV. Go ahead and wave. Hello. How you doing, 13? 
How are you doing? All right, speaking of Channel 13, I think you're going to recognize all these people right over here. We've got Samika who ran off. I didn't think I'd ever find her again. Sorry, they're playing Zydeco music. I know, you had to dance. Eric? Jazz, what's going on? Good what's morning, up, man. Travis? Everyone keeps thanking me for the weather. I have nothing to do with it, but it's awesome out here today. You queued it up perfectly. Like, it's literally a perfect day. And so this is cool. Everybody sees you guys on TV. You got your kids here. You got to ride in the float. And so what was it like? Oh, it was amazing. It was Lee's first time, casually my first time. And I was like a two-year-old. Speaking of two-year-olds, Lee is three. He tried to take my microphone from me. You still want it, bud? Say yeehaw. <laughs> That's right. Eric, what about your kids? Hey, yeah, no, everything's great. It's my son Gavin here. He's right on the float as well today, or we just got off. I mean, I just hope people, for people watching at home, that it, and it comes across, because when you're down here, I mean, you just kind of feel a certain spirit come through. Yeah. Everybody is just having a great time. You know, everybody, it's just, it's rodeo time. It's kind of a rodeo spirit, man. It's fantastic. There's a buzz, and like, even if you're not into the rodeo, it's hard to come down here and not have fun. Everybody's having a good time, right, Travis? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Our kids absolutely loved it. Um, it's just fun to see all the people. There's so many people down here. Where all these people come from? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just a fun time. We've had a great time. All right. Well, all your kids look just like you. Genetics, man. <laughs> we'll be right back. And welcome back, everyone, to the 82nd annual Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Parade. Tom Cook, Gina Gass, and Bob Tallman with you this morning, as well as the president of the rodeo, Joe Colley. And we were just talking about the barbecue, the World Championship barbecue. You might do record numbers this year. Yeah, a day like this, I think we're going to have a huge day. It's open until 11 o'clock tonight, and the carnival is open as well. Uh, so you can go out there. You can actually buy your half-price part, half price carnival pack when you get there for one of our volunteers and go and enjoy the carnival. But you can buy those online as well well for later in the show. Okay. Yeah, 40 some thousand first night. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's been over 40,000. It was over 40,000 last night. And today on a beautiful day like this, I'm thinking we'll have probably over 70,000 people come out and enjoy the barbecue. Let's that talk barbecue. about some of the entertainment you have this year. I know you work really hard every year to, to give a, everyone in our community an act that they could yeah. enjoy. Yeah, so you know our core mission is to promote agriculture. And we take that very seriously. We obviously uh, promote Western heritage as well. <laughs> And celebrate Western heritage, so it should come as no surprise. The majority of the lineup is country music. We have 12, 12 great country nights this year, but we also know Houston is the most diverse major city in America, and uh, we know that we need to mix it up a little bit as well. And so this year, we're really excited to bring in a new genre, K-pop, uh -huh. uh, Korean pop, uh, into into the uh, the rodeo. But uh, acts like Becky G, uh, Gwen Stefani. Marshmallow, electronic Lizzo. dance music, Lizzo, Lizzo. Really Chance the Rapper. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a fantastic lineup. 
and it should be something for everyone. Are there any tickets available for any of the? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there's still, still some tickets. Seats, you know, okay. Coming up this week, Midland opening night. Still have seats available at twenty dollars. Uh -huh. um, we've got uh -huh. uh, seats for Marin Morris, Becky G, Gwen Stefani. Still okay. seats okay. available. Chance the Rapper. Still seats okay. available. So go to rodeohouston.com and check it out. Okay. When you talk about the twenty dollar ticket, and you talk about opportunities on special Wednesdays. For 12 and under in free and 60 and older are in free. The price comparison of tickets for these kinds of shows any place else in the world will go from 150 to 400 to thousand dollars. When you take that $20 ticket, how do you break that down and justify that you can get in and spend the day and come to the rodeo and the show? Yeah, you know, we pride ourselves on being family friendly, both in the offering, but as well in the pricing. We want families to come out and have fun. So that $20 rodeo ticket not only gets you the rodeo and a great entertainer, but it gives you access to everything else on the ground. And if you bought those uh, half price carnival packs, you can get a lot of bang for your buck at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. For sure. All right, let's take you out to the streets and David Nuno. David. Guys, I could practice this for 34 years and could never come close to what Francis is doing here. Check him out. He's got the game. Are you having fun today? Yeah. I just messed you up, didn't I? So how, did you, how long did it take you to learn how to do this? Uh, for like uh, two years. Two years? Who taught you? Uh, my uh, uncle. All right, well, show us your moves as we walk away. Rumor has it Tom Cook can do this. He does it in his backyard. Back to you. Bet I can, partner. But I'd have to have one of those fake ropes to do it. That takes some talent. That is. I that like is the awesome. way you say that. And he's partner. just getting started. And I was thinking about how much of our audience doesn't know who you just imitated. <laughs> yeah, <really not. laughs> it wasn't a very good imitation. All right, we'll be back with more. The 82nd annual Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Parade in downtown Houston. After this.
Welcome back, everybody. Bob Tallman along with Tom, Gina, and we are joined by our president and CEO of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, Joel Cowley. I like what they're serving there, but I'm also a big fan of Tablitas, and uh, we barbecue a lot at the RV park while we're here, and that's where we shop, and I'm proud oh, to say it. Oh, how about that? All well, right. They have a chair open for you right there on that float. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they, 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 maybe they're, they, they might be watered down this time of the morning, don't you think? <laughs> this is your award, Joel. President's Award. Yeah. I'm, I'm very honored to provide that award. What a fantastic flip. It is. Yeah, it's good looking. It fun. really is. And they are followed by uh, the Aldine High School Marching Band you just saw there, the Mighty Mustang Band, Royal Blue and White. And there's a beautiful wide shot of downtown Houston. And there the Mustang Band is, directed by Jeremy Gray, Cliff Brown, Justin Poirier, and Dominic Dawkins. I love that Drone 13 shot. It just gives yes. you a whole new perspective, doesn't it? it really all does. these big events. There we go, there's Drone 13. There is, yeah. And you see the canyons of downtown Houston. So you can see there on the left side of your screen, people like, what are they, seven or eight deep? You can see we have a big, uh, robust crowd. And it just and goes on and Joel on. Joel got a chance to enjoy it all the way down yeah, the line. Close huh? and personal, fantastic. <laughs> Lots of families out, which we love to see. All right, your Sam Houston trail ride is before us, Alita. I'll tell you what, you know, these trail riders, they come in all ages. I've got Kelly right here. She started riding in the parade as part of the crew when she was six. She's now 16. Kelly, you look great up there. Thank you. So talk to me. How has this experience been for you? This has been great. I've been doing this since I was seven, and it's a it's a family thing, and I'm everyone here is related to me, and it's just it's great. So tell me, who are the other family members part of this uh, trail ride? Um, Jennifer and Mark Soselski are the the president and all that, and they are my cousins. My sisters up there. My mom and dad are wagon drivers, and um, everyone is it's a it's a big family thing. It's a family tradition. And thank you so much, Cullen. Truly, you guys, this is what it's all about, right? I mean, we're here year after year, and, and it's so lovely to see all the kids that grow up and are now teenagers in these trail rides. It's, it's wonderful. It's hard to keep your teenagers close sometimes, <laughs> 16, and they want to hang out with their friends all the time. But I tell you what, they've come up with a smart way to keep their kids close, right? Well, they are, and they're keeping their kids busy when they... Uh... We've always bragged on 4-H and FFA, and Joel Galley can add to that. But it's not just it's not just the scholarships for that. We have other ways of keeping kids busy, keeping them in school, keeping them being challenged. And part of the thing with the uh, with the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is is the multi the, the multi ways that we can give scholarships to. It's uh, I'm, I push on this every year. It's not just 4-H and FFA and ranch kids, Joel. Yeah, so we have uh, 35,000 livestock show entries, which makes us the largest livestock show in the world. 20,000 of those are 4-H and FFA entries, and most people think about raising an animal. Well, not all of those are raising an animal. We have competitions like agrobotics, where the young people have to program a robot to perform farm tasks, public speaking, veterinary science skillathon. We have an archery competition now. Uh, a food challenge competition, which is like an Iron Chef for kids. We have to prepare a meal and present it to judges. So a number of educational activities for young people to get involved in. And those things, those types of activities, they, they teach responsibility. But the most important thing is they build confidence. And that's the most valuable thing you can give to any young person is confidence. Yeah, they have an opportunity to be in the scholarship program throughout all of these different categories, not just agriculture. Yes, we'll award uh, over 750 scholarships after the 2020 show. Uh, about half of those are, are awarded right here in the Houston metro area, but some go statewide through the 4-H and FFA program. We have our Area Go Texan scholarships that we give, school art scholarships, exhibitor scholarships, all told $14.2 million in scholarships awarded in 2020. All right, you're watching the East Chambers High School Marching Band, and we've got David Nuno on the streets. He, he walked away. He's ready whenever you are. I just have to... They wanted to get him. David? 
He walked away. Okay, right. David, so where were we talking? He walked away, but we're looking at, you said, Tom, at the East Chambers High School Marching Band, the Buccaneer Band, 72 members strong, and we're happy to have them back here. This is actually their fifth year participating in the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Parade. All right, here's one of Bob's favorites, the Paso Fino Horse Association right oh. behind the East Chambers Marching Band. Tell us about this. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned earlier when we were looking at the Andalusians that I live three miles from a Paso what we call the Paso Ranch. And they breed these horses, the genetics today. Look at, look at watching them dance. And they ride them up and down uh, FM 920 that I go to my house in. I, I want you to understand that these horses are embryoed. Today they do embryo transfer, artificial insemination. And people just think, well, you just got a bunch of stallions and a bunch of mares, you turn them out in the pasture. The science of breeding, of which you can also learn as a part of what we do at Rodeo Houston and Houston Livestock Show, has now gone to the test tube world, and the science all came from the cattle world, and in human embryo work was learned from the cattle world as well. I had to throw that in, but God bless the cows, that's where our education came from. All right, we're here with Lance Welch, the brand new chairman. You just took over recently. How's it been? You know, David, this is my first year. This year? What, the, what, what about the weather we're having today? Oh, isn't it amazing? Couldn't be, couldn't be better. How's this whole experience been for you? It's phenomenal. Rodeo kickoff. We had the cookoff started on uh, Thursday night. Parade today. Rodeo kicks off on Tuesday. What a, day. What, a, what a week. What a week we're having. Talk about the process to get here. Uh, obviously, it's every three years it, it changes. How, how did you kind of wait, uh, weave your way through? So in uh, April of 2019, we started planning this parade. I started meeting with city officials, the, uh, the utility companies. Hailing this is a 12-month process to get this rodeo parade started. So. One thing everybody involved with the rodeo always talks about is all the volunteers that help make everything possible. How, how great does it make your job when you see that? Oh, my job is easy because I have 550 people that are phenomenal. This is their on the parade committee. When you see these smiles in the crowd, how does that make you feel? Oh, it's, it's phenomenal. We've got, we've got people oh, watching this parade today. All right, I think oh, we're losing yeah. you a little bit. Lance Welch, you're a humble man. You may have an easier job, but that is a year-round thing, so we salute you this morning. We're going to take a quick break and be back with more coverage of the 82nd Annual Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Parade. The Rodeo Parade has been sponsored by...
The Rodeo Parade has been sponsored by Boot Barn, proud supporters of the West. And welcome back to the 82nd Annual Rodeo Parade as you watch the Mission Trail Ride. They've been doing this 29 years, but they're one of the youngsters in this parade <laughs> when you compare it to the Saltgrass Trail Ride and the Prairie View Trail Ride. The Mission Trail Riders this morning. You know, Joel, I wanted to ask you about, uh, logistically speaking, as people are trying to figure out how to navigate their day to have the best experience possible, what suggestion might you offer? The Rodeo Houston app is the place to go. Uh, you can download that for both types of major devices, and, and it really will help you plan your day. Now, it will also help you plan how to get there. It has real-time parking information. It has all the information on how to get there with regard to Metro Rail and our Rodeo Express uh, routes. Uh, if you want to leave the driving to someone else. And then once you're there, you can plan your schedule that day. So go in and find the things you like, add them to your own personal schedule so you don't miss anything that you'd like to see. On that, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that public transportation has been a boon to the rodeo. Yeah, and that's that's really the easiest thing to do. Leave the driving to someone else, whether it's Metro or our Rodeo Express committee. Uh, that's the easiest way to get uh, to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo and get home afterwards as well. Well, that Metro committee is used to handling people, uh, elderly people, people with strollers, uh, large families, four or five kids, and they will make your life totally happy from the time you get on to when you get off to go through and our people on the grounds will make it. By the way, I wanted to talk about the food courts and all the other things that we have available at Rodeo Houston. You know, it's become quite a, quite a fact of the food at the carnival. Yes. And uh, Dominic Palmieri, of course, is gonna wanna have something to say about that. But here's the deal. Food has become a draw. All different parts of the entertainment world and the carnival i think they've got 130 different varieties of foods and drinks for you absolutely and sometimes i get asked you know is there anything healthy to eat there at the rodeo and yes you you can get a salad absolutely but in my opinion yeah in my opinion yeah there there there's no such thing as good or bad foods they're good and bad diets in anything in moderation can be fit into a healthy diet so why not have that one thing you can only get one time a year that one time a year and i have to give a plug here okay macaroni and cheese egg roll that is a new item this year and i cannot believe it has not been invented already it is fantastic after the third or fourth one i will file my report if it's if it's very good or not. 2.17 million dollars, let's call it 2-2. There are rodeos to emulate and I'm never ever going to take credit away from Las Vegas in the Wrangler National Finals. But Houston, Rodeo Houston, our bracketed competition, the way it's designed, and 2.2 million dollars is a big deal. Yeah, so we're we're so proud of our rodeo. Uh, the format is such that there's a winner every night. There's an overall winner within each Super Series every three nights, and at the very end, we're going to crown an overall champion that will receive fifty thousand dollars in that shootout round. It is exciting. Yeah, big competition too. You got three hundred and twenty rodeo participants. Yeah. Not only from the rodeo cowboys to the barrel racers and everything else. And it's not just three hundred and twenty. It's the three hundred and twenty best in the world. Yeah. And you combine that with the best animal athletes in the world, and you get Rodeo Houston. And then there's always the competition that I like to see, the old mutton busting. Absolutely. <laughs> if you only had a clue of what it takes to qualify to get oh, into the mutton on cue. busting. Oh, there it is on cue, our video. Oh, my Lord, the calf scramble. What uh, is that? You know what? Lives are made in the calf scramble in rodeos around Texas. But as you're watching the buck and horse riding coming from Rodeo Houston shoots right here, then you, of course, without the Canadians and the chuck wagon racing, what, look at that little wagon on the uh, right that we're pulling in a parade with the Hackney ponies. So and of course, then you're gonna watch the rodeo. As I, Joel said, they're the best. They were still qualifying after San Antonio Livestock Show and Rodeo to get here to Houston. Biggest challenge in the world. Yeah. I want to say real quickly, it's on the screen there that the boil water notice for Houston has been lifted. A lot of people are going that to appreciate news. knowing that. And we have another bit of breaking news regarding uh, traffic we'll bring to you in just a minute. But right now, I think we need to go to Lita Loresca 
who's standing by. Hey guys, you know, it's always a good time when David Nuno's giving me a hard time about how many uh, how many floats I've jumped on. Thanks, Nuno. But we always have a great time. I'm not keeping score 16 to 4. <laughs> uh, that's not a big deal. But I had such a good time, especially talking to Chef Hunter on the Goya float. Such yeah. an inspirational young man. I, I just love talking to him. Great chef. Obviously, you can see that story on abc13.com slash localish. And also Ben Dickerson, the very first ever scholarship recipient winner. Yeah, and hey, what about that breaking news development by Mayor Sylvester Turner, right? Right here. Right here on ABC 13. You get the parade and breaking news. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. We are keeping an eye on a traffic situation going on here near downtown that might affect people who are trying to leave this parade. This is, I believe, at 610 northbound. Help me out here, Kim. 45, and 45. Yeah, it looks like it, a bus involved It's a charter in an bus, event. we're right. told, that was involved in an accident. It looks uh, pretty bad right now. So, so people who are traveling through this area might find themselves facing a traffic challenge. Yeah, you can get the latest on abc13.com as you see those heavy records on the scene trying to clear this accident out. We don't have any details of injuries or uh, how this accident happened so far, but this may slow down people trying to get out of downtown Houston after this rodeo parade here this morning. And then we must talk about the auctions that are coming up. And of course, we've got the school art auction that is coming up on Sunday, March 15th. And Joel, that is an incredible auction. And that is some incredible art. When you talk about these kids, and you see the artwork that is done by sometimes 10, 12, 14 year olds. It is absolutely incredible, the talent that exists within these young people. And uh, people will be blown away when they visit the show, all these top pieces of art on, on display in NRG Center. Make sure you take time to look at it because it is absolutely incredible. And then we have as well, Saturday, March 21st, the Junior Steer Auction that will be airing at 11 a.m. So we invite you to uh, tune into both of those programs. Yep, and I'll be doing the Junior Steer Auction live this uh, on Saturday, March 21st. Bob, that's a great event. I love that they do the cattle call and everything else. Well, along with what happens there and the financing that goes with it, and you have to think about how many millions of dollars that we spread throughout the youth of Texas, young men and women, through the purchase of those cattle and the scholarships that'll follow with them. I want to give an invite to everybody to come join our rodeo performances. And uh, we're saying tickets are available still for Midland and our opening night. And um, all of the years that I've had an opportunity to participate, please understand something, that I'm one of three that will be there. My partner, Boyd Paul Amos and young Andy Seiler. So we are the voices of the Houston Livestock Show. How many years for you, Bob? Um, too many to count. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this rumor that I'm fixing to retire, that's a Texas We're squashing way. squashing that. Yeah. <laughs> Give it away. I ain't going nowhere. No, no, no. Would not be the same. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming with us every year Thank to you. do this broadcast as well. It would uh, not be the same without just a, nice to be a here wealth with of both knowledge. Of you this year. And with you, Joe Colley, my first time on the desk here, but it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, well, we, we've enjoyed having you, Tom. Joel, sure. thank you. Thank you so much. Hope everybody comes out to enjoy Houston's best tradition. Yes, yeah, so we the want Houston to remind people show and rodeo. March 3rd through the 22nd, they can come out and enjoy all of the fun and learn more about our Western culture and things about our community that they didn't know. And Gina Gaston, always a pleasure working Thank with you. Thank you, TK. And to uh, Kim Jackson and everybody who puts <laughs> together this show for ABC 13, our crew behind the scenes who always makes us look good and makes it easy for well, us. They try and make us look good. Tom. We thank you. I'm Tom <laughs> Cook for everybody here at ABC 13. Thanks for joining us for the 82nd Annual Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Parade. Get out there and rodeo. Yeah, have a great weekend.